What is up funky people, I'm Iteration Funk and today we're back in Animatica 2 for part 2 of the base tour. And last episode I left off here by my uh, fusion crafting course, so we're gonna move on and check out the things that's over on this uh, left side of the top floor. So over here I have a crafting core auto automation and most of these floors is pretty much the same. I have a setup to like, uh, like for example, bent white have more than nine ingredients. So I need uh, two parts for the recipe. So I'm using a named thermal foundation coins to kind of set that up. Later I realized you could use the packaged auto mod. But the second part here, you can't really solve with packaged auto. You don't want these pillars to overfill, so I have a redstone system here that prevents overfilling. So when there's a redstone signal here, it's going to pull the ingredient from this chest. But if this chest has all of the items for the recipe, which is uh, 15 items, so slot 14. If it, if it has an item on slot 14, there will be a redstone signal here that's pausing in this timer so it cannot transfer more ingredients and when there's a redstone signal here it will also repeat uh, it will also transfer the ingredient from the chest with a redstone signal so yeah that's just rate limiting so we don't mess up the recipe and this is one of my best setups of the pack i think i'm pretty happy with it uh, but let's move on. I don't want to explain it too much because uh, that would be like 10 minutes alone <laughs> Then I have an ender crafter here. I never really did automate it. I've just been doing that manually and here we have like um, Here we have a lot of automation interfaces that I've been using packaged auto to auto craft the uh, like the end game ingredients that require extended crafting so for example uh, the ultimate crafting table I can order up and other cool stuff along those lines. So the tier 5 solar array controller and stuff like that. Now to supply these tables, uh, first of all you set up the recipe in an automation interface and you can view it after the fact. So you have to set up the recipe once in the table and then click save recipe. The other part is supplying it with the ingredients and for that I used a uh, package auto. Let's find a table that has a lot of ingredients here. Maybe, maybe this guy. So as you can see this, uh, this is an unpacker and it will unpack uh, packaged recipes. And the guy responsible for packaging those recipes is this packager. And on that packager, I can just have all of the recipes uh, that I'm using over there. So we can take a look at the encoders here. And as you can see, it just holds a lot of ingredients and it helps when you can't really do that sort of thing with uh, applied energistics. It's a kind of a cool mod. And yeah. It, it has been a bit yanky with MBT and stuff, so you have to replace some of these items with the correct item because the item in JI isn't the item you might have autocrafted. So that's just a bit of a bummer, but yeah. Most of the endgame crafting went on here. Then we have the first machine cube uh, that I have a bunch of stuff in. So here I'm making resonant cell frames and this. Uh, this fermionic fabricator is auto supplied with sand so that it has the liquid glass to create that. So that makes the empty frame and then I have a setup uh, back there that does the full frame. Another fabricator, a resonator that I don't use too much, a pressurizer uh, for extra plate recipe <laughs> recipes. I think this is a duplicate because I did have another extra pressurizer here that was supposed to be my third pressurizer because the first two is filled they are back uh, over there anyways i just guess i made two extras that's fine this guy charges up 30 squirts and this guy i made last 
like the last episode of the series. I just helped crafting the lesser tiers of storage components from applied energistics so it was easier to make the uh, extra cells storage components that are, you know, they require a lot of nested crafting. And this is a squeezer because I did a lot of uh, integrated dynamic stuff in the end game, or a little bit at least. I needed a lot of these uh, crystallized blocks for manual. This guy does draconic energy cores. You are in uh, charge of making coal coke. This guy is making some extra alloys. But I don't really need an alloy furnace over here because I have so much space in my other like machine cube here. Oh and yeah, this guy is being auto supplied with primal mana. And this guy is being auto supplied with liquid oxygen. And it's using that liquid oxygen to make... Uh, what is it? It's making manganese dioxide. Then we have three of these uh, powered spawners on capture mode. And that can just automate the various soul vials. For example, you are a witch, you are a villager, you are a shulker. And yeah, that's just some of those. And up here I have a laser miner that haven't really been here the entire, uh, the entire playthrough, but right now it's Getting me some star metal that I needed. Uh, and yeah, that's more than enough for what I had in store. Uh, this is technically the first machine cube where I like where I designed how these would look. And it has a lot of uh, auto crafting going on. First, there's a there's two smelting factories. This guy's doing a few components like zirconium that our rock crusher is doing. And this smelting factory is full. So that's why I have this guy. Then a sawmill for sticks and planks, nothing too fancy. Many factories are almost full. Leather and some polarized stuff. Then I have my two pressurizers I mentioned earlier. And they are pretty much full with plates. This is why I had to make a third. And accidentally made a fourth. This guy is doing alloys. Now these are kind of empty since I moved most of the alloy creation to fluid infusers to kind of leverage the creative fluid tank. Yeah, believe me, these were full at some point. This guy is doing dense plates mostly. Uh, it's a compressor from IC2. Metal formers are doing cables and uh, casings, which are needed for a lot of recipes. Then we have... Uh, Enrichment chamber doing pure, uh, pure applied energistics uh, crystals. Then we have a crusher doing a few more polarized polarization recipes. Then uh, two compactors. One is doing gears, I think. So he has uh, a gear working die. And this guy. Oh, they're also gears. Okay, I didn't really notice. Some crafting units to cover our crafting needs. Uh, I could have made more. Sometimes I had uh, three, four or five recipes going. So I should probably have gone, out, gone up to eight of these. Then you know I have the packager that's responsible for pack packaging the recipes. Um, gonna get to this in a second. Um, back here I'm doing a few things. I have a alloy smelter doing some of the AE. Yeah, this guy's doing Ender IO alloys. Sag mill, I don't use too much. Just uh, dimensional shards, lithium dust. Then we have a, a soul binder doing a few recipes that's required for a lot of things. Not a ton of things, but it's nice to have it automated. This is a slice and splice that has automated, uh, you know, these circuits. Nothing too fancy. Then a powered spawner that captures Enderman. And this is an isotope separator that does uranium 238. This is used to make the DU plating that is later used to make elite plating that we need for. Uh, yeah, draconic cores. So we need a few of those. Uh, this guy's being supplied with osmium. So the liquid osmium bar keeps uh, full. And he does close stone and refine obsidian. 
And here we have Ludicrite Automation. So he's connected to a tank of liquid DNA that I mentioned in the first part of the base tour. And he needs plutonium, so the cyanide from the fission reactor came in handy here. Uh, yeah. Another carpenter doing iron cores. And a tank of primal mana that I never really filled. So it has, doesn't have too much, but it has enough. Then a metal former that only does uh, one uh, thing. It does shafts. Yeah, I know. Insert shaft joke here. Uh, but yeah, these aren't used too much. It's mostly for the machine structures that you need for advanced rocketry. So it was nice to have that automated. This is just an extra cutting machine to make lapis lazuli plate. Then we have a inscriber for making printed engineering circuits, which I suppose was a component for the genetics processor. So I had to have a separate setup for that. Then, uh, yeah, this guy is supplied with sand as well, and it makes apatine uh, electron tubes. Why? I have no idea. Apatine? Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, we needed to make the basic circuit plates. Okay, I see. Interesting. And this combining factory was used sometimes to make like the nether draconium ore for the slurry that we needed. This guy is pulverizing some extra stuff. And this guy is doing a few of the machine uh, frames that can be done in an induction smelter. So yeah, just a ton of uh, simpler automation, uh, which I could fit a lot in because they only need like two block spaces per setup, unless they, uh, like these guys needed the liquid, so they need these behind. But other than that, quite roomy and you can fit a lot of things in these. So. Time to go into the compact machines. Quite a lot to cover here, so let's get started. In here I have some component automation for the solars. So we need a lot of uh, various things like iron plates and uh, circuits. So this guy is doing plates and uh, this is an ingot former. So I have a tank of molten iron here that's uh, <laughs> it's gonna run for a long time. And it just makes plates and send them back to the system. Over here I'm making... I guess this tank it, tank is out, but I believe it used to make tin item casings. Uh, yeah, for the RE batteries. And uh, let's see, tin item casing. Yeah, I have close to 100, 100k, so it did good. It did, <laughs> it did good, fam. And uh, over here I have some additional stuff like the enriched alloy and this guy was doing uh, the circuits necessary and over here we have uh, flux crystal automation we needed the singularities so i just made a basic setup here i think someone is cutting grass outside so sorry if that uh, uh, if you can hear that in the recording anyways there's rock crushers here we have a granite a diorite and andesite that's made from these igneous extruders. These doesn't re really require any lava and they are auto supplied with water. So we can have pretty much an infinite amount. And these uh, dusts that you get from crushing these you use in a lot of end game crafting. And man, they are expensive as a base to run. Then we have um, then I have a setup to make rich fighter grow and then turn it into flux fighter grow. So that's used to power the farming of in the phytogenic insulators that's downstairs. Uh, then over here we have some, uh, you know, repetitive crafting that the uh, ME system would have a hard time making like a million items of these. So it makes, uh, for example, generators make stone gears and HV transformers. I don't need too many HV transformers, but the ME system for some reason doesn't like this recipe. And yeah, just a lot of little micro crafting bits. Okay, so we're in the next compact machine. Here I had to have a empower setup. So before this crafting core, I had an empower here. And it's pretty much uh, 
like for example, let's take a look at Empowered Void Crystal. We can make them both in the Empowerer, uh, the Combination Crafting and the Fusion Crafting. And this, I just chose to put a Crafting Core here because it's really fast. All of these pedestals have filters, so just a set amount of things can go in here so we don't scramble the recipes. And then this guy is on blocking mode to make sure there's not, uh, like if I craft two different things from here at the same time, it's not gonna overfill it with uh, different types and mix up the recipe. That wouldn't be nice. I have no idea what you're doing. You're making chlorine. Um, chlorine. Uh, it's not liquid chlorine. I think it's uh, yet for the titanium in an in a, in a later uh, compact machine. And we have a bunch of fluid infusers. They can make alloys. Nothing too fancy. I export these things here. Goes into like their separate melters. And then we can craft these items easily. This guy is doing sextuple compressed cobblestone. Yeah, don't remember why. I think it was for the deep dark portal. Here I have a setup. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because it's quite a process. But it's used to make uh, the crushed fluorite. So we're making fluorite water here running it through a crystallizer and then uh, pressurizing and then it's, uh, you know, we can use it to make the fluorite which is then used for yeah, nori and some other stuff. And I'm pulling some of the sulfuric acid up here to the fluid dictionary converter and converting it to the mechanism uh, kind. And then uh, I'm just turning it into its uh, can't remember if it's the gas form or not, because both of them are just called sulfuric acid. It's turned into the gas form, I think, because this is a pressure tube. Then this dissolution chamber turns that into slurry, which we need for... Uh, it was needed for a couple of things, but the creative gas tank uh, frame required all of these different slurries, so I had this set up for that. Next setup, so this compact machine is where I did all of my sifting and smelting. So I just collected up all of the various pieces here. I haven't sifted in a while, so most of them are out now, because they come over here. And then they are crafted into the various ores, pulled down here and uh, polarized, then smelted in the smelting factories. So I have two to keep up with demand. Uh, why did you remember the outputs? That's not a good idea. Yeah, anyways, they're gonna work again. Okay. Then I have a separate thing over here for the gold. Because we need the, the cinnabar for the signalum cell frame. And the gold ore, when you pulverize it, have a pretty good chance to give you cinnabar. And then I have sieves to give us a higher chance. And then back here I have a setup to make uh, printed silicon and then turn that into processors. Then I have a storage bus on that, so all of the processors in the system goes here. And uh, like the last episode of the series I set this up to just uh, keep up with the demand to make the, the last tier of storage component here. We're not going to go into this compact machine because there's nothing noteworthy. It's just a storage drawer wall with a, you know, storage bus that can collect stuff in mass. So yeah, nothing too interesting. And then these, uh, what looks like pistons is stoneworks factories pumping out like dust and other materials down to the drawers. Man, I'll try to cover this one fast because there's so much stuff in here. <laughs> So, first of all, we have a cutting machine that's doing circuits. Um, so, it's just gonna run pretty easily. Crystallizer, it does, uh, it does dilithium crystals and silicon bowls for the circuits. 
then we have uh, then these two setups is basically for oxygen production and then rocket fuel production but it uh, let me take a bucket of that okay can't i see anyways i don't think this uh, chemical reactor has a um rocket rocket fuel recipe anymore because now you can only make it in the mixer or in the vat to make the to make the recipe a bit more expert as far as i know so this guy isn't working anymore but then again i don't need fuel the only fuel i need is for the space station and that's over here the dilithium crystal and then we have a precision assembler that's doing uh, He's doing some circuits, plates and stuff we needed for space travel. Yeah, you know, just some basic stuff. Then this uh, rotary concentrator is turning that gas chlorine into liquid chlorine. And then it exports it to this, uh, this guy, the advanced metallurgic fabricator. So it comes up here. Let's keep a tank of that in here. This guy is making titanium. And some of the plastic alloys so titanium you can see that's the only recipe in here that requires liquid except for this that i'm not doing so it's safe to just stock it with that liquid and then i can do these uh, in addition to that because they don't need a liquid so yeah it's just a nice modular machine then here we have a rolling machine I uh, didn't use it too much, I just needed it for the super high pressure tanks, so I could breathe. Breathing is important when you're in space, so yeah, that guy did that. Then this big guy is a electric arc furnace. He does titanium iridium and titanium aluminide. Luminide. So yeah, most of the stuff in here is just advanced rocketry stuff, nothing I use too often anymore. This one is pretty empty. I have a fluid transposer that's doing the thermal elemental uh, doing the thermal elemental powders and uh, enchanting bottles. And these guys have nothing in them. Back here I'm doing soulbound books that I that never really did uh, need, I think. I don't even think they worked. Uh, over here I have an automation for planks and treated wood. So it's just... Uh, let's see... What are you doing? You're getting oak wood that it processes into these wooden piles which we can use to get a lot of charcoal and then I'm using the... Yeah, we're putting that back into the system and the creosote from that is used to make treated wood and this sawmill that's doing planks is sending about half of the planks into the ME system and the rest of the planks into here so I have a good supply of both planks and treated wood in the last compact machine I have uh, uh, just some end game molecular assemblers because I ran out of space in the ones I showed you in the first part of the base tour and I just did some nice things here. So there's three, there is uh, three P2Ps in here. Uh, and uh, that's enough to power two of these cubes each. can't remember how many lines are used here, but it's close to 32. Then I have these access points. Oh, and I forgot to mention, let's go out for a sec. You can see these cap capability adapters, they are kind of handy. So these capability adapters makes a tunnel through, so I can use the ME network in these machines. Uh, if I couldn't do this, this would it would be a pain to have the compact machines. Just having the ME system in there helps a lot. Here we have uh, farming of mystical agriculture seeds. So it's just phytogenic insulators with a couple of uh, reception coils to speed them up, and then. Uh, the essence go down to crafters and the product goes down to drawers for storage. So back here we have water supply, energy supply and some other cabling. Um, 
and then these uh, ender chests dispense uh, flux fighter growth to the entire uh, entire line of insulators here. So there's a lot of insulators, and then finally we have some cloches, and they're doing awakened draconium because they can't run in an insulator. They need a crux to work, and then finally down here I have a dragon egg seed with a crux because we needed some dragon eggs uh, for late game stuff. Needed it for the fusion crafting injectors, and let's not forget this cloche. It's doing hemp. Uh, Hemp for hempcrete, which I use for decorational uh, blocks around my base. And this setup is just a bunch of uh, a bunch of filled uh, bunch of filled black hole tanks that was filled with a creative fluid tank. You can see the crystals require a lot more uh, liquid, like it's uh, over half a bucket, while the ingots are doing a lot better. It's only 144 millibuckets per ingot, so uh, yeah, that's why they aren't, uh, they don't have the same fluid level. And then some more ingots. Most of this is just casting it an ingot former, then sending it back to the system, which is most of this stuff is from ingot formers, as you can probably tell. Over here, I did some manual crafting with compact machines. Then the last thing on this floor is the singularity setup. So it's just interfaces exporting, uh, for example, here I exported glowstone singularities. Then I just piped it down and let them run. Now these take a ton of energy. They're pretty darn expensive to run, like, um, I think it's around 1 million FE per tick per quantum compressor. So the energy cube was dipping a bit while I was doing all of the late game singularity stuff. As you can see, we needed the ultimate singularity, as well as at least 10 of each of these, or 11, I guess, to make, to make the 11 we needed for the infinity ingot. Okay, so I'm down on the last floor. And... Down here we have some environmental tech miners. I have two, uh, two tier 5s, or I had two tier 5s. This guy I used for crafting something, I think. And then there was a resource controller down here that did some of the mid-game mining. And uh, here's a hole that uh, this uh, world breaker made in the world. So yeah, that's that. Then over here I have some uh, targeted mob farming. So I did run blue slime here for a while. Because we needed blue slime... Uh, uh, we needed blue slime for... I think it's the blocks. We needed to make empowered lapis. Then I did shulkers here for a while, I can't remember why. Probably, probably needed shells for something. Then down here I have a well of suffering that's running on witches blood. So yeah, the ritual hurts, hurts them for life power. Then uh, they heal themselves up and they use... Uh, they have name tags so they won't despawn and I did uh, blacklist some of the noises they were making. I could add, for example, the hurt here as well and they would pretty much shut up so it can be a silent setup and this used to be my only altar but now it's just used as a production altar so it has a ton of uh, sacrifice runes and uh, displacement runes so it can quickly dispatch of all of the life power it made but this guy's long filled since I had uh, the creative fluid tank as well and up here I have a crafting altar with a ton of charging runes, so they can work up a crafting buffer. So, for example, if I if I put the uh, imbued slates here, it would just pretty much instantly craft. And that's just because, yeah, that's because we have uh, charging runes here that can that can hold a buffer of life power, and then it has a bunch of speed runes and uh, runes of capacity. 
Ruins of capacity alter how much of a charge the charging ruins can hold. So I can't remember the math, but I did uh, uh, optimize this a bit so it would work faster. So I'm kind of happy with that. Now I have Enchanter, a extra utilities Enchanter automation down here for some late game crafting component. Uh, or, you know, at least uh, some of them was used for that. For example, even infu Evil Infused, we need it for the ultimate ingot. And also for, yeah, I can't remember the other thing, but I did need a lot of speed upgrades. Then over here I have a setup for Demon Steel. So this open crate is treated as an inventory by Applied Energistics. And it just drops those Demon Steel into lava. I can demonstrate. Gold ingots, now Demon Steel. Just gonna dump them into the world and make my computer lag because it spews out a lot of particles. But yeah, then this vacuum uh, sucks that up and sends it back to the ME system. Then over here I have some alchemy table automation. By using retrievers you can specify the inventory to have two stacks of something. So this will keep the alchemy table at two stacks of potato and then one stack of bone meal and that makes uh, that makes plant oil then this guy is pretty straightforward he makes antiseptic then we have neurotoxin and finally draft of angelus which which we which we need for the bennett white so it's here so yeah a bit of a fun automation then we have soul automation here so i would have the sentient sword in here and then uh, the tartaric gems as well and then it can use the upper left slots to kill uh, zombies here and it's gonna keep filling the gems now the sword takes some will to um, attack I guess but it fills up uh, faster than it rains so it's fine then over here I have a charging altar it just charges a Master Blood Orb. So if we take a look at the network, I have a good amount of LP and that's used to uh, do the alchemy basically. Then I have some goats, or I had goats, now it's just one goat for goat milk. And you can't milk all of them, I guess I killed the ones you could milk. You needed, uh, needed goat milk for the creative fluid tank. So yeah, that was a thing. And this uh, nanobot, uh, it's just a tier 2 now, but I had a tier 6 earlier. It helped me through the uh, Chaos Guardian fight without having the full armor set uh, of in Draconic Evolution. And down here I have the automation I spoke of in the first base tour episode. Uh, this guy is... Uh, it has vending upgrades now, but I usually just put a bunch of arcane stone in here that gets placed by uh, block placers and then over time it gets turned into living rock and then uh, on a timer I send out a redstone signal to these cables activating the auto breakers huh I guess they are a bit out of sync because it gets arcane stone in here some sometimes this is only seven instances overall not too bad. Oh, and you're filled. That explains stuff. Over here I have a kill box that's connected to the Draconic portal that was uh, over by the Gaia arena. And here I just sent a bunch of animals and collected their drops into the system. And then that interface is also connected to a modular machine called the Arcane Crafting Engine, which makes a bunch of stuff we need. Uh, for the, you know, various crafting, but mostly it's, uh, it's the complex arcane mechanisms uh, which we need for the Bennett White, so I had to set this up. And then yeah, I have a Formium Essential Smeltery that smelts down things. It's been doing Invar lately because I needed a lot of brass. I think that's why I had uh, Invar Shears here. And the funny thing about these shears is that 
Both Invar and Constantan have 16 instrumentum, but no other no other essentia. So you can see that they are pretty perfect for doing something like uh, brass plate automation. Then that essentia is transported with a transfuser to all of these water jars that are labeled. You can tell I used a lot of instrumentum. Then finally here, I guess the last thing I did was void metal here. Uh, when they're done they get spewed into the hungry chest and then piped back into the system. And then I had, uh, I never automated this altar, but I added a lot of the stabilizers to just stabilize uh, the various rituals I did here. I didn't use it too much. I never really had to. Anyway, that's everything for this base tour. I might do a pack review and a base explosion tomorrow, but yeah, this is uh, it's time to wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you really enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, take care and stay funky!